Photo editing can be really hard and complex. There's also really no right or wrong way in how to approach it. If we jump into Lightroom, we have so many different curves and sliders, almost giving us endless combinations we can come up with. So that can make it really hard, but it can also make it really fun. And I find definitely a bit of guidance can really help you along the way. So welcome to another Lightroom tutorial, this one diving into the world of moody street photography and how you can use Lightroom to transform your images into more compelling stories. So whether you are new to Lightroom or just looking to refine your skills a bit further, this will help you achieve these looks in a really clean and consistent way. Remember, photo editing is a totally subjective thing, so take what you can from this video, apply it in your own unique way. Let's jump in. So starting with a simple point, but a very important one, and that's getting that base starting point spot on. So of course we wanna nail this in camera as best as possible, but we can always tweak it in post. This starting point is really crucial because it can totally change how you approach the rest of your edit. This means always starting with your simple sliders like the overall exposure and white balance. Adjust these first to what looks right before doing anything else. Really important regardless, but again, if you're using presets, this is really important as well. So when you go and look at those presets and start applying them, you can actually see how they are meant to look. I won't be using my presets in this video so you can see exactly what I'm doing, but you can still check them out down in the description to help you create these moody type of edits. All right, on to the next tip. Have a clear direction of what mood you are trying to achieve. The word moody can mean a lot of different things. So before you start editing, really think about how you want the end result to look. Creating a mood can be all about the atmosphere, the play of light and shadow, and often a sense of mystery or emotion. So a lot of this will be created in camera and the conditions you decide to shoot in, but we can always enhance this in post. Conditions like shooting at nighttime, shown in my last editing video, is one way to help create this type of atmosphere as the different lights and colors from artificial sources can really help create a certain mood. Conditions like rain where lights, textures, and reflections are further enhanced is another one, or even cloudy conditions producing more desaturated colors. Lastly, I also really like these highly contrasted patches of light, where this play of light and a bit of mystery can also be created in our shadows. So remember this when going out to capture your images, but let's look at how we can play on this when it comes to editing. Photo like this one, the approach I often take is quite simple, going for really dark shadows and really making these patches of light really stand out. Back to the beginning, how I would approach this edit is just really darken our shadows. So emphasize what's already there, darken the shadows, maybe brighten the highlights a little bit, make this patch of light really stand out. So how I would do that is I'm just going to boost it up a little bit to start with, but then I'm going to bring down my shadows, bring down the blacks. The issue now though, if I hit J or look at the histogram, you can see our blacks are clipping. So I'm going to fade them out using the tone curve just to stop them clipping. And you can see there I've kind of made this image darker, but at least our blacks aren't clipping now. To finish it off, to create this mood, I would actually add a bit of a vignette on this one. So we can go quite heavy on this one because the corners are quite dark. I'm just gonna boost our overall exposure there. And then lastly, maybe I'll boost the highlights a little bit. Again, just to draw attention to this. To finish it off, I would use some selective edits and gradients, which I'll show in a sec. This won't work for every photo, obviously, so let's look at an example shot more in flat conditions. So in this one, we still have some dark shadows, but there is a lot less of them as the overall image is much more flat. If you look at the before and after, the overall tone hasn't changed that much but the mood in this scene is firstly the conditions, but then also enhanced more with color on this one, which leads us to the next step, create a color mood. So especially for some photos with less dramatic lighting conditions, this is where color can play a much larger role in creating a mood. So certain color combinations can be really effective in creating a certain feel, as we often see in different movies and TV series. Of course, these are just examples. We can use many different colors and combinations to create a very specific mood. Remember, we can also use the lack of certain colors to create a very specific mood. So don't just go ham on increasing your colors. Perfectly demonstrated by this edit here, where I've removed a lot of the blue in this image, or this one here, where I've really emphasized this warmer hue. 
So when approaching color in Lightroom, firstly, I like to make the largest changes first. So this is where I will go to camera calibration, then I'll go up to the HSL tab and also the color grading tab after that. So jumping into an edit, the look I wanna create is this film warmth preset, a nice moody, almost desaturated film type look. So that's what we're going for, but I'm not gonna use the preset. So I've gone ahead and quickly made some adjustments just to the basics. You can stop and have a look at this, but to note, I've added in negative clarity and a bit of haze to give it that kind of softer, almost film look, which I'm going for. And I've also added in a bit of an S curve with fading out those blacks on our tone curve. So to work on our color, I wanna start with calibration. This is where we're gonna shift our colors a bit. So I'm gonna start with a slight shift towards aqua on our blues shift those green slightly and shift our red slightly towards orange as well. That's all I'm gonna do there. And then basically I'm gonna take a lot of color out of this image. So we're gonna come up to color mixer. As I said, taking out color can really help create a mood as well. So we up to our illuminance, so I jump across to saturation. I'm gonna take out a lot of the blue there. There's not much else in this image other than kind of our orangey yellow. So let's keep that there. I'm just gonna bring the luminance down on the blues those and hue I think I'm reasonably happy with those colors there so next I want to go into our color grading tab and this is where we're going to create our final mood I'm going to add this kind of cooler cast throughout after we take that blue out of the sky I kind of want to add some back in and give it that cool tone so shadows we're going to add in some blue but I'm going to dial that right back down maybe around there around 10 and basically the opposite into our highlights so more of a orange there and again dial it right back down in our global i'm also going to add in a little bit of color maybe some greeny aqua there and again just bring it right back down and just make that kind of subtle adjustment there and there you have this nice moody edit that went from this to this quite quickly with those color adjustments. So this is just one mood we can create. I really do recommend spending a bit of time playing around with the color grading tab and see what moods you can come up with yourself. Step four, the power of selective edits. So for me, I pretty much use some kind of selective editing or these masking tools in pretty much every one of my edits. Again, my Lightroom presets also include a bunch of these that are super useful and I use them all the time. You can apply most of them with a simple click. Some of them you will just need to simply move around to get them in the ideal spot or even tone them up or down slightly until you're happy. So selective edits when done well can take an okay image to a really great one, really changing the overall overall mood and again helping draw attention to the right part of the image. So in this edit you can see I've added in a number of selective edits. I've added in this linear gradient down the bottom. If I turn that off you can see it just kind of gets rid of our crossing. Similar one here on the side which hasn't done as much. Not sure I need that one. And then one here which is similar kind of just got rid of some of the distractions here. Made that a bit darker. And lastly here, I've just increased that light a little bit. On this one, I also subtracted the subject just to keep that light behind our subject there. So you can see before our masking layers and after how much this has changed the overall mood on this photo. Looks like we have a visitor on set. Well, we did. So lastly, let's talk about grain, as I know this is a very subjective one. Obviously, any part of photo editing is subjective, but grain seems to divide a lot of people. I know many who really like to add it into their photos, others who probably think it just adds a bit of messy noise to their images. So for me personally, I use it a lot more now than I used to. I really like the effect it can have. I think this is because I've shot a lot more film now. I've started to really like this look, but I would say it doesn't work for every photo but on the right photo, it can really help enhance that mood even further. Again, my presets have different levels of grain, which you can quickly add in with one click to your already edited photos. But here's some examples with different levels of grain added in. So you can decide for yourself whether you like grain or not, but my advice would be definitely try it out on different types of images, see where you might like it and where you might not like it. All right, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, remember to subscribe, keep on creating and keep on growing, my friends. I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.